Good morning, Magic the Gathering fans. Last week on the channel, we talked about the banning of Jeweled Lotus in Commander, a very popular topic last week. Uh, so this week, we're gonna talk about the legacy of Jeweled Lotus, how I think Jeweled Lotus will live on beyond its years in Commander. A lot has happened in the last couple of weeks. Since the banning of Jeweled Lotus, the Rules Advisory Committee has disbanded. Wizards of the Coast has taken over control of Commander format and the rules and the ban list. So. Uh, who knows if they will unban Jewel Lotus? Uh, who knows if they will uh, reprint Jewel Lotus, even though it's banned in Commander currently? Uh, but all of these are possibilities that could be um, overturned by Wizards now that they're in control of Commander. Certainly, they want more people to play Commander. It's the most popular format of Magic the Gathering. And I think they're trying to look for ways that they can just retain all of that um, cash flow to keep it within Hasbro and not let all the players just do it on the side. So, Jewel Lotus uh, is a card that is unrestricted in the Legacy format, which means you can play four copies of Jewel Lotus in Legacy. It can add three mana of any color to your mana pool for your commander. However, that's pretty much useless in Legacy because there are no commanders in Legacy, but there is one card that interacts with Jewel Lotus in a way that lets you use that mana for other spells and artifacts and anything else you want to cast. And that card is Doubling Cube. So today I picked up a couple copies of Doubling Cube. I'm going to talk about this card on the channel today. And uh, I'll look at the deck list in, in Legacy. There is a Jewel Lotus Doubling Cube deck. Uh, the goal is to get mana rocks into play, like your Jewel Lotuses, uh, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petals, and then cast Doubling Cube for two colorless. It was originally printed in Fifth Dawn. It has art by Mark Tadine. So I'm gonna take these copies to MagicCon Las Vegas and have Mark sign them. They trade for between $20 and $40, depending on if they're non-foil or foil. And uh, when you pay three colorless mana and tap doubling cube, it doubles the amount of mana of each type of mana in your mana pool. So if you played Jewel Lotus or you played Lotus Petal, uh, for zero mana, and then you tapped it, and sacrificed it, and added that mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, let's say you had Jewel Lotus and Mill Lotus Petal. That's four mana of any color, but three of it has to be spent on your commander. You could then pay three mana to tap Doubling Cube. You would double the three mana of any color from Lotus, from the Jewel Lotus, and then the extra three mana, there's no restrictions on that mana, so that mana just goes into your mana pool. Same thing with Lotus Petal. Uh, you tap Lotus Petal, sacrifice it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. The doubling cube doubles that mana, so now you have two mana unrestricted of any color that you can use in your mana pool. So you have five mana now that only cost you three mana to get. So uh, it's a little broken. I think people have figured out a couple years ago how Jeweled Lotus could be played in the Legacy format. Um, so I see the price of Jeweled Lotus dropping a little bit because it's not playable in Commander at all. And if I find some copies at MagicCon Las Vegas for under $30, $35, I'll probably pick up maybe a playset and maybe build a Legacy deck using these Doubling Cube cards. I just think the art is fantastic. It reminds me of Mana Vault. It reminds me of all of the Mark Tadine, uh, you know, Mana Rock cards that he's drawn over the years. Uh, certainly you could use Soul Ring as well to gain colorless mana and then double that with Doubling Cube. This is the foil version of the Fifth Dawn card. This was printed in 2004. Uh, Doubling Cube was reprinted in 10th edition. Here's a copy of the 10th edition Doubling Cube non-foil. This was printed in 2007. Same art. And there was one subsequent reprinting. Uh, this is the foil version of the 10th edition. I will have Mark sign that as well, possibly in gold or silver to match the foiling. Uh, this is the 10th edition. It was reprinted one more time in a secret layer with alternate art. So there, there's only two versions of Doubling Cube out on the market. Um, they trade for $20 to $40 depending on the finish. Uh, 20 being non-foil, 40 being foil. I also picked up some other um, iconic Mark Tadine foil cards in this pickup. I have another copy of Second Chance, which is essentially another time walk with restrictions on it, just like Jeweled Lotus is a Black Lotus with restrictions on it. Um, and I picked up some 
snow-covered waste to get Mark Poole to sign foil and non-foil, retro frame and regular. Um, people, I just think people love anything related to Black Lotus. That's why Jewel Lotus is so iconic. Uh, even cards like Blacker Lotus that was printed in unglued. It's not even legal in Magic formats, but people just like the art. People also like the ability that you tear Black or Lotus into pieces. It adds four mana of any one color to your mana pool and you play this as a mana source. Then you remove the pieces from the game afterwards. So uh, just the lore of Black Lotus in Magic the Gathering is one of the reasons why people love um, Lotus Petal. It's one of the reasons why they love Jewel Lotus. So it's one of the reasons why I think Jewel Lotus the legacy of Jewel Lotus lives on a little bit beyond Commander, and perhaps we see an uptick in legacy decks that play Jewel Lotus and Doubling Cube uh, going forward in the legacy format. Uh, last thing before I go, I'll show you the deck list. If you want to build the legacy Jewel Lotus Doubling Cube deck, uh, it is available on MTG Goldfish and a couple other uh, net decking sites if you want to just see what other people are playing. It uses all of the mana rocks that cost zero mana and then uh, takes advantage of doubling cube to double that mana into your mana pool and use it to cast other spells to win the game. There's only one creature in the deck. It's the Karn Great Creator. That lets you get cards from outside the game, which you could possibly use as finisher depending on the opponent and the, and the situation and the matchup. Um, also four copies of Echo of Eons. That was a Modern Horizons 1 blue spell that is essentially a time twister with uh, lets you flashback once. So it's essentially a time twister for more mana with uh, one regrowth built in. So that's kind of cool. Uh, very reminiscent of, you know, Alpha Beta Unlimited time twisters. It can, the Legacy Jeweled Lotus Doubling Cube deck does contain 42 artifacts, as I mentioned before, most of which are zero cost artifacts that give you colorless mana, mana of any color. Um, some have restrictions, but with doubling cube, the restricted mana gets doubled anyway. Uh, so that deck contains four copies of the Jeweled Lotus, as I mentioned. Um, as of the printing of this deck, those were $100 a piece. Uh, and again, if the price of Jeweled Lotus drops to like $35, I would pick up a play set of those. Three copies of Lion's Eye Diamond, four Lotus Petals that we saw earlier by April Lee. Four Mox Opals, three Chromatic Spheres, one Chromatic Star, one, three Manifold Geeth, four Voltaic Key, which lets you untap artifacts, three Doubling Cubes, we're going to use four copies here, four Grim Monolith, which is maybe one of the most expensive cards in this set at three to four hundred dollars a piece, two Helm of Awakening, one Mesmeric Orb, and four Mystic Forge. There are nine lands in the deck as well. It doesn't run many lands because most of the mana is produced by the artifacts, but it does contain four Ancient Tombs, four City of Traders, which is also one of the most expensive cards at uh, $350 a piece, and one Crystal Vein is the land. It does have 15 cards in the sideboard, one extra copy of Lion's Eye Diamond, one Tormod's Crypt, one Walking Ballista, two Chain of Vapor, one Manifold Key, one Pithing Needle, Three Defense Grid, one Liquid Metal Coating, one Ratchet Bomb, one Ensnaring Bridge, one Aether Flux Reservoir, and one Mycosynth Lattice. So that's the full deck. 60 cards in the main board, 15 cards in the sideboard. Three doubling cubes in the deck list, but I have four copies to look at today. Uh, follow this channel if you want to see me get these signed in Las Vegas by Mark Tadine. Um, give me your comments. In the comments below, like this video if you're a fan of Mana Rocks, Jeweled Lotus. Let me know if you think my prediction is correct on what people are going to do with their Jeweled Lotuses. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Thanks, everyone.